Hi everyone, this is part two of uh, my stalker uh, story that I started at the last video. Uh, the one who was, you know, stalking me outside of my uh, business. So, as you know, I went on two dates with him. The first date he was honorable, a gentleman. The second date he started talking about ducks being raped and what he, how he can make women uh, squirt. So this is X-rated. Ah, maybe I should have said that at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to make this, uh, for adults only. Definitely. So if you're not an adult, don't, don't watch this. It will just gross you out. So I got, I blocked him, whatever. And then seven days later, I'm just too freaking nice. I unblocked him and then I saw where he had left two messages uh, telling me how sorry he was and that he is a gentleman. And he would never do anything to frighten me or to push himself on me. I mean, I took it hook, line, and sinker. And because I believe that all people mess up and you should give him a second chance. Well, that's where I really messed up because I shouldn't have given him a second chance. So I said, oh my God. So <clears throat> I text him and I said, if you swear that you're going to be a gentleman and not do anything inappropriate or anything that I don't want you to, um, let's plan to go to Berkeley Springs and on July 3rd I said we're gonna stay in my brother's cabin and um but we have to stay in the loft where it's kind of warm now here's what I failed to mention on both the dates I went on him the first one like I said he was mannerable the second one he was like being real creepy he was sweating profusely, so profusely, I thought he was gonna die. Uh, just everybody in the room was not not sweaty at all. He was soaking, the shirt was just soaking. The sweat was just running off his head. Just the fact that that was happening to this poor man. Uh, I said, do you have a medical problem? He goes, no, well, I beg to differ. Now that I think about it, I'm thinking that he was so turned on in his head that he just brought his blood pressure up and was just sweating. Oh, so, okay. So he goes, no, nah, I'm not gonna stay anywhere where it's too hot. Let's just get a hotel in town. I said, okay. Now keep in mind, he'd already given me his written promise that he would be a wonderful travel guest and he also left two um, phone messages all right so so i trusted him now when he got to my house something told me not to get in his car i looked inside of it and i go oh the sky is driving you know a 30 year old car and and that didn't bother me too much because mine's 20 years old. But when I saw inside, I realized what the hell's been going on in his car. It was just, it was all of his seats front and back were shredded like a tiger had got in there, you know, from that movie, The Hangover. Remember when that tiger had just ripped that guy's, I guess it was Mercedes. It looked just like that. Uh, so something told me just to take my car. Now, keep in mind, it had to be a really strong feeling because I don't even like to drive, you know, anymore. So, he got in my car and we drove. And the minute we went into the hotel, I kind of went into shock because I thought he was going to get me a separate room or get a room with two double beds, whatever. That wasn't the case. He had conned me. We were in one bed. So I knew then I had to wear like a suit of armor to bed because I was not sexually attracted to him because I 
thought maybe he would make a very good friend. So uh, the first night he, he, I found out he had to wear the CPAP machine, which, you know, okay, I can deal with that. And of course he's still sweating and he has this white stuff all around his lips. I thought maybe he had rabies. It was just like foaming. And I go, what the hell is wrong with your mouth? Were you bit by a rabid fox or something? He go, uh, no, I'm just sucking on a mint. Well, I was constantly having to wipe his face. And I'm going, why am I doing this? He's a grown man, 60 some years old. And here I am wiping a man's face. So the first night I was able to, to wear like four pieces of clothing and I would turn away from him and I would not touch him at all. I go, I am in trouble. So when we went to my brother's cab and I told his wife, my brother's wife, I said, I'm in trouble. So she's trying to find a way to get me out of this. She was maybe trying to put him on a train, do something. I said, listen, I'm really, you know, really concerned about this guy. So she was researching this for a couple of hours. So then I had to go back to the hotel because I didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to stay at my brother's because he sweats so much. So, uh, so we go back the second night and he's taking a shower. Now, most guys I've ever been with only take like five minutes, not even that much, you know. He was in there for 45 minutes. And you know why I know? Because I timed him. I was in the hallway and I'm going, what guy takes 45 minutes to shower? That just creeped me out. So you can imagine what he was doing in there, right? Yeah, you can imagine. Uh, I just bleached my roots. I gotta do it again. Look at that. Ah! So, so he's trying to put some moves on me and uh, I'm laying in the bed with a lot of my clothes on and out of nowhere, now here's the X-rated part. He, uh, oh my God, I hate to even say these words. I hate to even say this. I don't know where he takes off his pants in the bed and he starts stroking himself. And I got so creeped out. I go, oh God, help me. And he goes, oh, why can't we, why can't we, you know, have sex or whatever? I said, no, that wasn't the agreement, okay? Then out of nowhere, you know, I'm ready to go to sleep. I take a sleeping pill just to pass out, right? Well, not to the point where I wouldn't know that he was touching me, but he goes, well, can I look at it? I have never had a guy in my whole life that wanted to look at it. And this is what I said to him. I said, trust me, it's beautiful. And then I just went to bed. Ah, oh, then he puts his CPAP machine. Of course, I can't get so turned on with a guy unless I'm already in love with him that has a CPAP machine. You know, because he's overweight. He's uh, sweating profusely. Just, just the smell of him. Ah, uh, because I know earlier in the day, he'd done something so stupid. Uh, my brother's cabin has a hill and no matter where we went, he always wanted to go back to bed after breakfast. And I go, I said to him, we just woke up. It was his way of getting me back in the bed. But as I was pulling up this hill, he jumped out and he goes, I need to go take a nap again. That was his way of getting me in the bed because he didn't think my brother was there. Okay. So, uh, he jumps out, throws the doors on my car open and he jams the door in rocks. I knew I was in tr serious trouble because he was about to rip my door off. Now, have you ever met anybody that was so smart that they're stupid? Well, this was him. He says, oh, keep going. I said, no, I'm not going to keep going because my door is going to be jacked up 
And he was just standing there like a dumbass. So I got out, examined, I, I put it in park, stopped, didn't move no more. And I got out and accessed the situation. And I realized I needed to dig away all the dirt and the rocks away from my door in order to get it undone. But because what he did, because we weren't even up at the house yet, he just jumps out of nowhere. I must still, you know, the car was still in motion. Um, he'd already messed up my door. So he's standing outside and then I was able to unwedge my door and then I was able to get out of that situation. But he did hurt my car. Yeah, I'm still pissed about it. But, uh... I remember looking in the back seat and I saw his socks because he, I told him he needed to buy some flip-flops. And he put his dirty socks in the back and he changed his shirt because he had sweated so much. Uh, his socks were brown. They were supposed to be white. And the stench coming off his shirt was nauseating. Okay, so the next morning... Now, keep in mind, we'd had breakfast two different times, and he did not tip the waitress, which I thought was extremely rude because we got a free breakfast with this. I left the 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 tip. So on the second day, uh, I couldn't hold back anymore, and I've never done this to a guide. I probably never will do it again. I said, you are you are a pervert because he was. He jumps up, runs upstairs. Of course, I have to leave the tip, $5. He gets in the bed. He strips down his clothes to just his underwear, and he puts his CPAP machine on. And I go, okay, this is my, this is my, this is my out right here. So I grab my suitcases, flung them down the stairs, jumped in my car, and I said, I'm leaving this little jerk. He comes running out to the middle of the road in his underwear, waving his arms. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, I said, you know what? Go upstairs and jack off all you want with your CPAP machine on. That's exactly what I said to him. And I waved goodbye to him. <laughs> I will never make that mistake again. I will never give a guy a second chance because believe me, trust your intuition. Uh, so I, when I went back home, his car was still at my house for three or four more days. I wanted to have the thing towed. That's how mad I was. I wanted to have his car towed. So you girls out there, if you get a bad feeling on the first and second date, Go with your gut and just do not pursue the relationship because I, 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 I have been told by my children, my grown children who are in their mid-40s, Mom, you're too nice. You got to stop that. 